Hi everyone, Mr. Fantas here, and today I'm going to show you how to swap some faces in Photoshop. So first we're going to open up Photoshop Elements, and you'll get your desktop background screen here. It's the uh, plain gray area. And usually what we would do to get started is we go File, New, Blank File, but not today. First thing you need to do is find an image online that you love to swap the faces of. I've chosen this image here of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And once you've found that image, you're going to copy the image, go into Photoshop, and go File New, but instead of blank file, image from clipboard. Once that image comes in, all right, you can stretch out your window. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a better look at these two people. There we go. Now, to swap faces, we're going to do a few things. We're going to work a lot with layers today. And now this says layer one, but if I want it to be my background, what I will end up doing is I will go layer, flatten image. Now it's my background and it's locked, so it's always going to be there. First thing I need to do is decide how I want to select their faces or trace their faces. I like to use the magnetic lasso, but you can also get away with the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to stick with the magnetic lasso. And if we remember, magnetic lasso will click and attach to the end of the person and follow the edge of them as long as the person's color with Donald Trump's hair is light and the background is dark, as long as there's that big difference. If your tracing starts to get away from you, you can always click the mouse to re-anchor it. If it goes crazy like out here, you can always go backspace to go back. All right, I'll go backspace again so I can get back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace all the way around Donald Trump's face, making sure I even get the neck. Don't forget to get the neck. And when you reach the first part, the first point that you started tracing on, there'll be a little circle beside the magnet. Then click it, and you've selected his face. All you've done right now is selected Donald Trump's face. You can't move it, nothing like that. You try to move it right now, it's just going to move. Oh, well, it actually cut him out. Imagine that. Okay, I don't like to cut out the images this way. Um, I like to make an extra layer of them. I still like to have the original um, person's photo behind there, and I'll tell you why in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Edit Copy or Control C, and then I go Edit Paste. And you'll say, well, that did nothing. He's still there. Well, when we pull it apart, he now has two faces. The reason why I like to leave the original face on there still is I like to match up the face size with the other face. So if I put Donald Trump's face over Hillary Clinton's, I reduce the opacity, so it means I can see through it. So now I can see two faces. I like to match up the eyes to make sure that they're similar to the mouth. So this size of face is pretty similar, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to leave Donald Trump there for a sec, just like that. And what I'm going to do, just I'm going to click the eyeball here so I can't see him anymore because I want to trace Hillary Clinton's face now. So with that selected, I'll click the background again because I want to work with Hillary Clinton. I'll use the magnetic lasso again, and I'll start with her. Clicking down on her neck here just once and starting to trace. Going all the way around. Even the neck, don't forget the neck. And back up once I've got it, I make a copy, control C, control V, and we now have Hillary Clinton also. She's going to be going up there. Now bring back Donald Trump, and the first person we're going to work with is Donald Trump. Now Hillary has a lot of hair behind there. Uh, I'm going to make Donald's head just a little bigger, just a bit. Um, and what I'm going to play around with is just tilting it a bit. So I get that at the right angle, so it kind of looks like he's looking at the camera there. And I'm going to click the check mark, which will render it back again. Now, let's just adjust it. Okay, so Donald Trump's head it is now on Hillary Clinton's body, but Hillary Clinton has a lot of hair behind there. The one way we're going to get rid of her hair is by clicking the background layer and using something called the clone stamp tool. Now, the clone stamp tool will copy whatever's here over here and paint it over here. So if I want this blue background here, I'm going to hold the Alt key on the bottom of your keyboard, the ALT key, and I'm going to click the mouse once. 
and then let go of everything. So that's the Alt key, click the mouse once, let go. Then I'm gonna paint over here. And what you'll notice is there's another marker on the other side and it's erasing or copying the color over there. So all I'm doing is painting Hillary's hair the same color as the background. I'll retarget, that's Alt key. Let go of everything with the mouse button and we're starting to do that. Now this white line here, I hold the Alt key, click the mouse button once and I go directly across so I get that white line still. Okay, I'm cloning that white line. Alt key, mouse button. Okay, this will take a while for you to get the hang of. Alt key, mouse button, click, let go, start painting. Okay, it's called the clone stamp tool. Alt key, mouse button, let go. And we're getting there. All right, there's a little bit of hair left over here. We will deal with that now. Okay, so Donald Trump is starting to look like Donald Trump on Hillary's body. I'll get just a bit more hair. There we go. Now, you can see a bit of a shadow back here. Uh, what you can do is you can get something called the smudge tool. Smudge tool will kind of just let you blend the colors in. Um, and it just drags the colors around. So I'm just dragging the mouse around to kind of flatten things out. It's like when you used to wet your finger to drag a color across in art class or charcoal. It does the same thing. Okay, so Donald Trump's head is over there. Hillary Clinton is up here. Now, the difference with this one is she's looking over here. We can make her look the other way. We could flip her. We go image, rotate, uh, sorry, layer horizontally. And she'd be looking that way, which looks a bit better, like they're looking in the same direction. I kind of like that. I'm going to tilt her head just a bit. All right. I'm going to make sure she's lined up with his eyes by going opacity. Yeah, it's kind of the same. You can see his eyes and mouth are in the same location. All right. Now, the one thing with Hillary is that she needs to be behind the collar. So I want to make a copy of the collar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra layer of the collar. I'm going to get the magnetic lasso, and I'm going to trace out his whole um, suit here. I'm going to go down here all the way up, the whole white section of his suit. Up, down, and there you go. I'm going to go... Edit, copy, edit, paste. So now you notice in the layer menu, I have a layer here. I want this layer of the tie to be the top layer because I want it to go over Hillary. Now, when I introduce Hillary Clinton back, she's behind the suit and tie here. Kind of neat. But I just need to get rid of this one section. So I go through Hillary Clinton's layer, Hillary Clinton's layer, get the eraser tool, and I erase that there. Okay. Now, last thing I'll do is I'll make sure that she doesn't have any Donald Trump behind her here. I think it looks okay. I'm just going to adjust her a bit this way. There we go. Perfect. Now, last but not least, you need to blend everything together. Last step. So you're going to go layer, flatten image. You're going to get the smudge tool. And I'm just going to do some fine touches on Mr. Trump here. Uh, with the smudge tool, I am going to then, see how it's softening the neck? I'm bringing, I'm blending the colors together a bit, okay? To trick the person's eye, whoever's looking at this, that it is one image. Okay, Hillary Clinton, uh, she's okay. What I might do is I might hold this mouse button down, get the blur tool, and make it a bit smaller and blur the lines in between where I pasted things together. See, I'm just clicking it to blur it a bit. So whoever's watching it, their eye will kind of be fooled to believe this is real. So there we go. We've blended the two. They're happy. They're switched. Um, I challenge all of you to find your own pictures and blend them together. Uh, find two heads that you want to swap or find a head online of somebody and put it on another body.